And Hussani Abdu, Country Director for Care Nigeria, which provides humanitarian aid. Hussani joins us live now from Abuja. Hussani, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to at least see or hear one of our correspondents' pieces there, but one of the sort of saddest things about what I watched there was people using floodwaters for, for example, uh, washing their clothes, also drinking, I mean, pretty much everything. They're using these floodwaters for everything. A lot of people know that there are risks when it comes to waterborne diseases like cholera, but they think they have no choice at this point. The government isn't stepping in to help them. What do you say to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because ordinarily people uh, depend on rain. They harvest rainwater uh, during this kind of season for most of their domestic activities. And so when you have excess of it around you and your environment, you tend to use it for, for those kind of domestic work like, like, like washing. But of course, it exposes you to other uh, health-related hazards, which many of them are not very much conversant with. And this is part of what we are doing in terms of creating and providing wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene-related kind of education for people to actually be aware that that kind of stagnant water can actually be very harmful and they need to take the right actions to ensure that they don't expose themselves to both waterborne diseases and even cases like malaria because uh, the mosquito larva seems to grow in the stagnant water and can easily get uh, they can easily get infected so this is a major thing because government has not of course alarm has been raised about the possibility of this um, uh, level of flood uh, uh, at particular point at the start of the rainy season, but there hasn't been more investment in terms of preparing for this particular kind of situation and also educating people on what to do under this kind of under this kind of circumstances. And what we are seeing is, arguably for me, it's not just in a decade. I think in more than a decade, this is the worst of floods that this country has experienced. Yeah, listen. You know, there's nothing you can do to prevent the floods co from coming. I mean, we all know that Africa is dealing with climate change right now. I mean, there's the same story the world over. However, you can prepare yourself and you can also make sure you have the infrastructure in place to try to handle it better and to save lives and to prevent as much disruption as you can when the rains do come. What does Nigeria learn from this, do you think? Yeah, I think it's a major, it's a major lesson, um, of course. Emergency preparedness is very important. Almost all the states of this of the federation actually have um, an emergency preparedness unit or an agency that does that. Um, uh, we call it SEMA, um, State Emergency Management Agencies. But many times people don't actually prepare for emergency, and the concept, the, the, what defines it is that oh no, we just we can't be preparing for negative things or any bad thing to happen to us. But this is what you deal with. The president has just um, instructed his ministers to uh, give him uh, a, a proper guide in terms of what to do to prevent this kind of occurrence. But we are dealing with this one in the first instance. This is what we need to do. So whatever recommendation is going to come is only probably to guard against future occurrence. But for this one, we need to be very clear. The government need to come out very clearly in terms of what kind of response we need to provide to support people. The, the, right. the images from Kogi to Bayersa to Delta are, are just unbeliev uh, unbelievable. It, people are in a very dire strait. And um, most agencies like ours that are involved in this response is actually also very overwhelmed. It's overwhelming. Of course. Resources of course. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you also got about 1.3 million people displaced right now. That is an incomparable incomprehensible figure. I mean, those are staggering numbers. I mean, people who have essentially lost their homes, they've now settled in roadside shacks. You've got however many children out of school. I believe it's about 60% or so of that figure are children. They're not in school right now. What are the ramifications of that? Huge. Uh, Nigeria is a very large country, 200 million people. And this flood is actually happening in some states that are actually of very high population density. And many times, naturally, people also live around the river and areas because uh, very close to the rivers because this is where the lands are more fertile and more arable, and that's where they, 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 they connect their, lively, their livelihood. So the implication is that a lot of children, um, thousands or millions of children are currently out of school because the schools have been washed on by water. Uh, livelihood have been badly affected, market activities. Of course, Nigerians are very resilient people and trying to push on with some of those things, but market activities have been disrupted. 
farms have been destroyed, livelihood um, and livestock massively also uh, destroyed. So for the farming part, it's even the most difficult because uh, Nigeria is already stressed uh, uh, by years of violent conflicts in different parts of the country affecting food production. And it, it, the, the implication is that the country may be faced with a much more bigger uh, case of food, uh, of food crisis if we don't uh, prepare and respond very quickly to this situation. Yeah, Nigeria's economy has already suffered. The last thing it needs is, of course, uh, this, what we're seeing on our screen right now. Hussaini, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.